Hey all of you, hope you guys are great. Welcome back to yet another video. So in the last video, we had built our smart contract for crowdfunding. If you haven't watched, I'll link in the i button in the description so you guys can follow that. And make sure to save the playlist because it's 75 smart contract for different industry. In this video, you will try the smart contract for a exchange platform where user can come, they can deposit the fund, withdraw the fund and they can make money out of it. Okay, so that's the contract we're going to build in this video. Hope you guys will learn something new. And if you guys really want me to build a project on this smart contract then do let me know in the comment section that you guys want and do let me know that what are the technology you guys want me to include in the project so that will give you the maximum learning so let's write the smart contract very quickly so let me give the comment exchange because that's what the contract we're going to write let me provide the general convention license identifier pragma authority 8.0 and let's give the contract and we're going to call it exchange and now we have to define the state variable so the first one is going to be the owner of the contract the person who will deploy the contract the second we want will take the mapping and it's going to return a nested mapping in that we're going to run the amount the balance of the user who has hold into this contract so that's the first mapping we have now we have to take one more mapping and it's going to return the boolean so authorized token so in this what we're going to do is the owner of the contract whoever is build this contract he's going to authorize certain user tokens and that's the data we're going to keep track in this mapping so just follow along with me if if you are confused with any or of these variable everything will make sense when we'll test the contract so that looks fine now we have to take a variable unt public fee so we have to charge a fixed amount of fee so whenever someone will do the trade we have to charge the fee and then we'll allow them to do the trade so we're going to take 0.1 ether the fee trade and that's the trade variable we have now we have to deposit define the events so deposit event so whenever someone will call the deposit function we have to pass all of these data inside the event so that's the deposit this is the withdraw event we have to pass the index token address user and amount I believe that you guys are familiar with the index concept, index concept in the event. So whenever we want to get the data from the blockchains, we can utilize this index. But the one thing I want to highlight here that you can't pass more than three index inside an event. It's only three, not more than that. Let's define one more event. This is going to be a trade. So whenever any trade will happen, we have to initialize this event. So all of these data we have to pass. So. So these are the three events we have in the contract. Now let's simply come down here and we have to define our constructor. So we're going to update the owner of the contract. That's the first thing we're going to do inside this constructor. And that's the only thing we're going to do. Now we have to write the functions. So the first thing we have to do is to write the modifier because we're going to restrict certain function for only owner of the contract. So let's build the modifier only owner. And here we're going to build these conditions. Message.sender is equal to the owner. If it's not, then we have to throw the error message that the owner can call this functions and then we have to provide this so it can execute the functions now we have to write the first function they'll say deposit and that we have to pass the token he or she wants to deposit and the amount it will be a public and in that we have to make this statement check so we have to check that authorized token so is not authorized so when someone will call we have to check this and it's going to return whether it's true or false so if it's authorized then it will run true if it's not then it will run false and in that way we can easily able to identify the user that whether he's a authorized person or not so that's the first condition we have here now we have to check the other condition the amount is provided it should be higher than zero not the zero if it's less less than that or zero then we have to throw this error message so these are the two check we are doing now we have to come here we have to simply check the balance the balance of the user and we go to simply update that because he's depositing so we don't need to check the balance so what we're going to do is we're going to deposit the amount of token he's uh, is depositing into the contract in his address the wallet address we are updating his balance once we're done with that we're going to simply call this deposit event because that's the event we have initialized so that's the deposit function pretty simple hope things make sense to all of you guys now what we're going to do is come here here we're going to take another function we'll call it withdraw and that we're going to pass the address token address and the amount public so anybody can call it and we're going to check for a condition so first thing we have to check the balance of the sender that it should be greater or equal to the amount he's trying to withdraw if it's 
don't have that then we have to throw this error message that insufficient balance or he hasn't have that much balance which he is trying to withdraw from the contract so that's the first check we are doing now we'll come down here and here we're going to simply transfer the just we're going to simply tr subtract the amount of the token from the contract on his address okay so when we when he will deposit we are simply updating updating here and when we are when he is withdrawing we are simply subtracting so that's what we are doing here come here we're going to simply initialize the withdraw event that looks pretty fine so this is the withdraw function now let's take the another function we'll call authorize so the owner can only authorize this one so we'll say only honor and here we have to say authorize token that's too true so because authorize token is a mapping and we are simply saying true to that particular address so that looks fine let's come here we want to take another function we'll say revoke token so this will only honor has the access the power to do that if he authorize someone he can take that as well take and that's how he can do it so that looks fine let's create one more function we'll say set fee so he can increase the fee and we have to simply update the fee we are charging so this is the old fee and now we're going to simply update with the new one and that's let's create one more we'll say trade and this will allow the user to trade their token so this one is the most important function into the smart contract which allow them to do the trade and here in this contract in this function we're going to make the money exactly because we are the owner and we are allowing user to do the trading so and that's the amount we go to charge inside this trade so we'll take the token and the address the seller amount and we're going to provide the price it's going to be public so anybody can call it and here we have to do a couple of checks so first we have to check the message dot value should be equal to fee so whatever amount he wants to trade at least he has to has that amount of money we can charge the fee okay at least he has to has amount of fee if it's not there then we have to throw this error message that insufficient fee balance or insufficient fee you can call whatever you want now we have to do the second check we have to check the balance of the seller so token seller so the one who is trying to sell we have to check his balance it should be greater or equal to the amount he is trying to sell if it's not there then we have to throw this error message that insufficient balance now the third check we have to do is the balance address this mess dot sender and we have to check the amount and we have to simply multiply because he can buy one token he can buy more than that so we have to multiply with the price so we can get the exact amount and then we have to check that he has the at amount of in his vault or not if it doesn't have that amount then we have to throw the error message otherwise we have to continue with the function we have to throw this merit insufficient exchange balance that's was fine and then we have to simply call this token balance seller and we have to subtract the amount from the seller balance and we have to simply update to the message or sender balance the one who's calling the function and we go to simply initialize that from here as well a balance and then we have to do the same thing for the seller as well we have to transfer the funds from the seller to the buyer and buyer to the seller and here we go to initialize the trade event that's the event we have and that's pretty much so this is the entire smart contract we have written for the exchange now let's test this out this is the entire smart contract we had written for the exchange platform and these are the state variables we have these are the events we have constructor and modifier and all of these function we have here now let's simply deploy the contract come here i will go with the very first account and i'll simply deploy this is the only contract i have click on this deploy and click one more time the contract got deployed and here we have the instrument contract and here you will find all the functions all the variables we have defined so click on the owner you will find that this is the account of the owner you can check the fee that what amount they're going to charge you can check the balance so what the first thing we have to do is we can call this one so let's come here and first thing we have to do is to do the trade so the first function we have to call this one authorize so we have to authorize any user so he can transfer the fund into the contract so what i will do i'll come here and i'm going to grab this attention account sorry number two and i'll come back to the number one account and i'm going to authorize this account too so i'll come here open this one and i'm going to authorize this user i click on this transaction the transaction went through and now this user is authorized to do the transaction of the token so what i will do now so this is the function we have called this is the revoke we don't want to revoke it 
we have already set the price and these are the only function we're going to call by the user sorry con on contract owner now i'll come back to the account number two because this is the one we have authorized just now and he can deposit the fund so right now we have to pass the address of the token so right now we don't have any address so what i'll do i'm going to take the address of his own account and here i'm going to pass the amount to five but in the real world we're going to have an address of the token that's what we're going to pass it here okay so click on this transaction you can see the transaction went through and if you find here you can see this is the word we have here now if you simply copy his address and you can check the balance so you can come here you can click on this and you can see the balance we have here and you can call this one paste here and you can see this is the balance we have exactly in the contract okay so this looks pretty fine to me you can he or she can easily able to withdraw the with order token so right now you can see that we are only doing the trading with one token but this contract can hold multiple token and that's why you can see the address so just imagine that you have a erc20 token like you have created your own token and you want to provide the exchange so you can simply pass the address and you can provide that so let's withdraw the fund so i'll provide the address of the token and i want to withdraw right now i have this five and i want to withdraw all the funds so i'll provide five and click on this and the transaction went through and if i call this one i'll have zero and that's looking absolutely fine so i hope this entire thing makes sense to all of you guys and if you still have any confusion any doubt do let me know in the comment section and if you really want me to build a project around the smart contract we have just completed then do let me know in the comment section that you guys really want me then definitely i'll come with a tutorial where we're going to include this entire smart contract and we're going to connect with the front end and we'll do all the trade which you can able to find here right in here in the remix id and you can allow user to do the swaps you can allow user to do the trades and all of those things so that's the only thing i want to cover in this video hope you you find this video valuable and i'm going to provide you this in smart contract so simply visit dollarthusen.com there you will find the entire smart contract code and you can just play around with this try to test from your end and try to understand that what logic we have implemented in this contract so that's the only thing in this video hope to see you in the next video have a wonderful day bye bye